I'm Aline. Welcome to my kitchen. And I'm doing another <laughs> piggy over pop in a bag, y'all. I'm doing another revisiting of a video I've done before. And this it is, made a bubble. It was begging to be popped. <laughs> I'm uh, doing baked beans. Uh, and this is Memorial Day weekend. Uh, this is Sunday. These are uh, all dirty. Those are all dirty. You can have those. Uh, Sunday the 27th. So, so I am doing baked beans for today and tomorrow. Because uh, what I bake will be in this pan here. And Piggy and I will eat the whole thing today. It'll take us a day or two. Or three. But like I said, I'm doing a revisiting of my baked bean recipe. And uh, it's a very simple recipe. Very good recipe. Uh, I'm just doing a couple things different than I normally would. Uh, so I'll go over the list of my ingredients and tell you what I'm doing different. That's you where need, that experimentation comes in, I talk up. You need two cans of pork and beans with the juice. I'm going to go ahead and pour them in there while I'm at it. Oh, you're going to have the juice. Put oh, the juice to it. Put the juice to it. That's it. Got to have that juice and them pork and beans to make everything work right. Now, you can use any kind of pork and beans you want to use. These happen to be wild wood from Save-A-Lot. If you want to use uh, Campbell's Hunts, uh, store brand, whatever, I mean, it's up to you what kind of porky beans you use. I am okay with what you got to use. I use what I use. You use what you use. Your kitchen, your rules, right? All right, now we got two cans of pork and beans, half a cup of brown sugar packed. And when I say packed, Simply means that when you put the brown sugar in the measuring cup, you pack it in. As you can see, it's still got the form of the measuring cup. Go ahead and pour that in there. And it calls for a half of a medium onion chopped. And that was half of a medium onion. And if you don't have anything but a large onion, it'd be about a fourth of a large onion chopped. Okay. Now... It, the, the main recipe does not call for this, but I'm adding it. I've got about a fourth of a bell pepper here that is chopped. And I'm going to put that in there. And it calls for a half a cup of ketchup. You can use whatever kind of ketchup you want to use. You got homemade ketchup? Use homemade ketchup. If you want to use Hunt's, use Hunt's. You want Heinz, use Heinz. If you're using store brand like me, use the store brand. It's whatever you want to use when it comes to ketchup. I'm just saying. Next, it calls for a tablespoon of mustard. That's the yellow mustard. I think it tastes best with the yellow mustard, but if you want to use the brown mustard, by all means, use the brown mustard. Or if you want to use stone ground mustard, use stone ground mustard. Again. Not me, but do you happen to have any great coupon? <laughs> like I said, it's whatever you want to use. I am not telling nobody you have to do this or that. None of my business what you use when you cook. All the way to be my business is if I was eating it, it's something I couldn't eat. Or if you make a cooking video and you put it out there for people to know. Okay, next it calls for a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce and a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. I have them combined here. I had enough dirty dishes. I just want to get one have to mess up another one. There we go. Then it calls for salt and pepper taste. Well, I'm not using salt and pepper. I'm using piggy syrup. The PTR, I'm using a fourth of a teaspoon. No, excuse me, a half a teaspoon. I apologize, half a teaspoon of the PTR. All right. Now, the recipe says mix all this right here together. You'll see, that's why I'm putting it all in this bowl instead of messing up a second bowl. You can just mix it all together in the baking dish. Now, the original recipe for this says to mix this all together and add your bacon on top. I said... And I did tell you, you know, in my last video, you know, if you want to put hamburger meat in it, you can. Or if you want to put venison in it, you can. It's just entirely up to you. Well, today I have about eight ounces, somewhere between six and eight ounces of uh, 
brown hamburger meat that's crumbled that I'm adding to this. And I did cook this a little while ago and let it sit and cool a little bit so I could handle it. Gotta get that powder. And again, just stir this in. Now, if you want to stop right here, you can stop right here. You do not have to add the bacon to this. This is, entirely, this is how my aunt made uh, baked beans, only she used ground venison instead of ground hamburger meat. What's wrong with that? Huh? Which one? Aunt Ruthie. Oh, okay. One passed away? Yeah. They had, ate a lot of venison, and uh, this is how she would make hers. She, now, I don't think she put the bell pepper in hers, but... Uh, she would put the ground venison in it. And it. Oh, man, it was good with that in it. But I happen to like the bacon on mine, y'all. Peggy, here's my stir. You can have that. I don't need it anymore. And, I, y'all, I apologize for the looks of this bacon, this stuff. I took it out of the pack, and it all fell apart on me. You'll see some of it's just fat. Some of it isn't meat. Y'all should have heard her a while ago. She was trying to wrap around hot dogs. Yeah, I was doing my bacon wrapped hot dogs. Have not heavy. You try to try to wrap that around hot dogs. That ain't gonna happen, y'all. That stuff just just chunks. I that right there was like the biggest slice I had on it. I'm just gonna don't let it get you mad. Just take it as a lesson learned. Next time she knows she's gonna be doing something like that with hot dogs, go ahead and get the good spend stuff. the money for some more a little bit more expensive stuff. You know you're going to get the actual strips. That's it. I'll put a couple more pieces on here. And it calls for roughly half a pound of bacon. You don't have to use a half a pound of bacon. You can use whatever well, you, you get the want. actual strips and not, not things that have been stripped. Yeah. <laughs> Got some thick bacon there. There we go. We'll just, we're going to call that good and done. Piggy, I need a lid put back on that, please. And we'll stick that in the refrigerator. Second, and I'll get a lid for it. Y'all, that is how quick it was to make up my baked beans. Now, again, prep time takes the longest. Chopping your onion, chopping the bell pepper, measuring out your ketchup, your mustard, and your other ingredients. That's what takes the longest, is, is getting everything prepped. Putting it together and putting it in the oven, no time at all. You do want to have a uh, preheated oven, 350 degrees, preheated. And this is going to cook for 30 to 40 minutes. So I'm going to put this in the oven. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to grab me a baking sheet and put it in there because I don't want that to bubble up and over into my oven. I've done had enough of that going on. So I do have me a baking sheet here. Now, you don't have to have a baking sheet if you don't want one. That's entirely up to you. So with the baking sheet, it might take mine a little bit longer, so I'll probably go closer to the 40-minute mark. But I'm going to set my timer for 35 minutes, and I will check it around the 30-minute mark. We're at 35 minutes, and I'll check about 30 minutes. We'll take it out, and when I take it out, I'm going to let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes before we come back and uh, do a taste test on that because it needs to cool for about 10 to 15 minutes. So I'll see when that comes out of the oven. There she is. Here I am. This has been out of the oven and sitting for 15 minutes. Now I did go ahead and cook these for the full 35 minutes. This is what they look like. I know a lot of y'all out there saying, that bacon ain't done. Yes, that bacon cooked for a good 40 minutes or 35 minutes in the oven. Now that's good and done. It's been set, like I said, for 35 minutes. A little on the runny side, but that's okay. All right, young, and you fixing to get a towel. Have about to, to knock this thing over. Ha, ha, I got something for you. Run the, kid, the kitties out of the kitchen with a towel, y'all. And if y'all wonder why I'm putting everything to the side of the plate, well, me and Piggy, we got a few other things to go with this when we get through here. Got hamburger patties and bacon rape. Uh, what is it, pickle stuffed? Pickle stuffed, bacon wrap hot dogs. We've got sliced tomato and we've got a hot dog slaw. Oh boy. So I'm going to put this right here. Cut off the side. Oh 
All right. All right. Now these will thicken up over time. If you leave them over nice, they'll definitely get a little bit thicker. And they will do that because it's going to take us a while to eat these. Piggy says it'll take a while. I'll be eating on these off and on all day. I love baked beans. Probably my all-time favorite bean. She gets hungry more often than I do. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Her system works quick. Mine don't. That little taste of bell pepper. I don't normally put bell pepper in, but that little taste just gives them a little, mm, makes them taste, just, just a little pop. Mm. That's good. That's really good. Well, yeah, that's My Baked Beans Revisited. Like I said, it may not be the way you make your baked beans. This is the way I make my baked beans. And Something for you to try if you happen to get a gander to do so. Yeah. The thing about it is, baked beans are really easy to make when you think about it. You, know, you saw what I put together, how long it took me to put together. To put it, it doesn't take long. And you can cook them in the casserole dish. You can cook them in a cast iron Dutch oven. You can cook them in a regular Dutch oven. It doesn't matter. Cook them in what you want to cook them in. Fix them how you want to fix them. Put them in that bowl and put them into something that's got some heat to it and cook away. That's it. And uh, if they're not thick enough for you, well, maybe cook a little extra 10, 15, 8 minutes longer. Let them get thick. Or take them out. Let them get good and cold. And then heat them up that way. But anyway, they are good. Even, and, even if all you got is a little single eye camping stove thing you put on top of a bottle of propane and crank it up and let it fire up, set it on top of that, let it cook. I've done it. I've done it cooking like that with a little single serve frying pan on top of the center of a little bitty kerosene heater. And that was back to Blizzard of 93. They wasn't no power. And had a little kerosene heater. Everybody was hungry. They didn't know what they was going to do. They was tired of sweets. So I crunk up that kerosene heater, took up the front off of it, got that little single serve frying pan, cooked up one egg at a time, one piece of sausage or bacon at a time, and got everybody fed. Got to do what you got to do to get it done. But I that, hope y'all like this recipe. That's old Marine. I really do. I hope y'all like this recipe. I hope y'all like baked beans. Uh, everybody have a great Memorial Day. And please remember what I hope y'all had a great Memorial Day because this will be the Friday after Memorial Day that y'all see this for the first time. Uh, please remember what Memorial Day is all about. It is not about the veterans that are still here. It is about the veterans who gave their lives. That's right. It ain't about the drinking and the cooking out and right. partying. It's about the ones that gave all. It's, it's about the ones that gave their lives so that we could do that. That's it. So, uh, again, thank you all for watching. Hope y'all have a great day. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. Where about more?